all that counts. Excellent talk. Thanks. Vicky, hello. Hi. And winner of the second heat, number 17, Matt Cavanaugh. Yes. <laughs> In second... everything your dad not around the house more a slippers and cardigan sort of a bloke I blame the parents not society no such thing is the Kathy less understanding more condemnation She's what we're in for if we keep Mr. Justice Ralston waiting. Come on! Who the hell is Francois? You heard my darling Francois. Well, you shouldn't leave things lying about, should you, bitch? And it, it, what's all this stuff about, about me helping it? Who is he? What's going on? Just wait till I finish my shift, Lisa. Lisa! I need a supervisor. Where's Cole? Uh, I need to get this signed off. It's due. And I'm late. Baz! Really ease back on that left-hander at the top, mate. Zezu! Ten seconds off your time! You wish. was on a low-level training exercise from RAF Wilminster. It's not yet clear if there have been any fatalities. We'll be updating you on that story as soon as we have any further details. Would you? Hello? Yes, he is. Is that Kate? How are you? It's Kathy Winslow. I hear you. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, he is. Harbridge. When? Any details? And he hasn't called to say he's okay. 
Radio News. Yeah, well, call me if he calls you, OK? The plane and RAF jet try not to... crashed in Hartbridge Wood, where a motor mass meeting was taking place. It's believed there were several that hundred spectators bike. attending the event. Pull over, James. Oh. You're in no state to drive. Have just a I'm fine. Number, Let alone appear in court. I'm calling is Kate, and then I'll get an adjournment. Who prepared the flight? Coveney, sir. He's there. Worksheet. Sir. Right and right. What the hell did you call? So, let's get you home. River Corp. Yes, Mr. Kavanagh. She did. It's down for Friday now. He is? Oh, what a relief. Yeah, terrible thing. Yes, I will. <clears throat> Bye, Mr. Kavanagh. Matt, safe and sound, Miss Winslow. Just heard they're on their way home. Good. And Mr. Kavanagh says to say thank you for earlier on. No injuries? No, just very shook up, he said. Yeah, so dreadful. Thank you, Tom. Oh, Miss Taylor sends her regards. I bumped into her this morning. Emma, how's she getting on? Well, we didn't talk about a new chamber, just that band of hers. Ah, uh, thrush. Thrush, sir. Yes? Tom, would you uh, pop this into Mr. Aldermartin's pigeon now? It's a French course, my wife's. He wanted to borrow it. Well, he won't get it aujourd'hui. He's still at Romford doing his stint as recorder. So he is. All hail, great judge, to your bright rays. We never grudge something praise. Ecstatic. Trial by jury. Oh, there have been loads going over anyway. Really low training, yeah? Or maybe just the same ones going back again the other way. This one sounded different. We all looked up. One minute it was there, and then it, it just came down. 
we were dead lucky. Governor? Yeah, yes, just on them. Buzz. Hello, mate. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, no. How long do they reckon? Really? I'll pop down tomorrow and check out those nurses. Vicky, yeah? Have you got any more change? Call back, reverse... The... No. <laughs> Broken leg. Clearly, the fact that my client pleaded not guilty can be little to his credit. And certainly society must be protected from those who seek to burgle its houses again and again, regrettably. I would ask, however, mindful though I am of the ineptability of an immediate custodial sentence, that it be at the lower end of the scale available to the court, if at all possible. Mr. Ramos, do you have anything to say before I pass sentence? After that vote of confidence, there is never an excuse for breaking into your fellow citizens' homes and stealing from them. I propose in such a serious case to impose a prison sentence of 18 months. It is, of course, easy to condemn. It's less easy to understand. Having tried to understand, and I hope with a fair degree of success, your background, your circumstances, it's plain that you've never felt that you've had a, um, how shall I put it, a stake in society. Yes? Well, I hope you will feel that in the future, as I propose to suspend the sentence for two years. Nice one! I hear congratulations are due. Are they? You're master reader next term, aren't you? Ah, uh, I see. Well, it's strictly on seniority, of course. No effort involved, apart from staying the course. Still. Thank you. And on what will you address the Honourable Society of the Middle Temple? I haven't even thought. Nobody comes to those things anyway. But I do think a modest celebratory dinner might be in order. Far more fun. Busy weekend? Social. Sussex? Yes, good blow on the downs of the weather holds. Oh, and a concert tomorrow evening. Just our local lot in the village. Not all bad. Mm. Well, have fun. Thank you. Simons, aged 30. Robbie Slater, aged 14. Vicky Thompson, aged 20. Paul Tranter, aged 19. Natasha Williamson, aged 23. Scott Yardley, aged 15. Flight Lieutenant Adam York, aged 38. Sandy Freeze, aged 29. Rebecca Garfield, aged 19. Terence Jackson, 
age 34. Terence Jones, aged 22. Martin Malcolm, aged 14. She'd been having an affair with the mechanic, and his suicide note implicated her. Oh, that's what the police thought. You would be defending arguably the most hated woman in England. It's not that, Peter. Mac could have been killed. One of his friends was. No one would criticise you for refusing the instructions under the circumstances, least of all me, James. If you really feel that your emotional involvement would prevent you from doing the best for a client, then... No, no, no. If I take the case, I take the case. The question is, do I? Hmm. Normally, I'd jump at it. Smells of the state rushing to judgment again. All they've come up with is a rag bag of sketchy, not to say circumstantial evidence. It's, just, it's very unconvincing. What did Cove in his notes say? Not that the prosecution can introduce it, of course. It was ambiguous. Uh, I hope you're satisfied now. Uh, it's as much your fault as mine, along those lines. But it did mention a Francois. We're still looking for Francois Baudin. One of this action radical lot. Who are... It's an extreme breakaway group of a legitimate French political party. Luc Rouge. Trotskyist, basically. The suicide note was addressed to Lisa White, who turned out to be Charlotte Sinclair when they caught up with her. Charlotte Sinclair, lover of Francois Baudin, political fanatic, and Lisa White, lover of Corporal Coveney, the mechanic who botched up the aircraft controls, one and the same, at the same time. The CPS is wheeling out the big guns, I hear. Ross Harkins, Treasury Counsel. Will he find his way to a provincial crown court after all these years at the Bailey? <laughs> Miss Leeming is certainly very keen for you to accept. I know, James, but if one's up against the establishment, there's hardly a better solicitor around. We are the establishment as far as Maggie Leeming's concerned. She wouldn't have instructed you unless she thought you were the best man for the job. If you'd seen Matt, the state he was in, Peter. The state I was in. I know it was months ago now, but the last thing I want is to be... disloyal. Have you talked it over? No, no, that would put him in an impossible position. No, I've got to make the decision and stand by it. Everyone is entitled to the best defence they can get. Well, even her. Especially her. She'll need it with all this hostility. Hostility? I wonder why. Oh, come on, Matt. You know how the law works. Innocent until proved guilty. There are other barristers. You could have turned it down. Yes, I could. But I'd have needed a very good reason. How about me for a reason? Or Vicky? God, you even came to the memorial service. 
Nothing is going to bring them back, Matt. Any of them. Well, it's a bit bloody close to home. Charlotte Sinclair will not collude with state justice. I thought I'd made that perfectly clear to Ms. Leeming. I have explained your views to Mr. Kavanagh. Not clearly enough, obviously. At least listen. You're facing very serious charges. If you're found guilty, you could go to prison for a long time. There's a good chance that your collusion, as you see it, won't be necessary. I shall ask the judge to withdraw the case from the jury once the court has heard the prosecution's evidence. I shall argue that the disaster itself was an accident, in which case, obviously, all well and good. Such touching faith in the system. Twenty people died, Mr. Kavanagh. Twenty-two, Miss Sinclair. Whatever. My point is that our independent judiciary has always been subject to the pressures of opinion. Exactly. We're not all card-carrying members of the establishment, as I'm sure Ms. Leeming will have told you. As a matter of fact, she did say she'd heard you were a political animal in your youth. Did she? What did you do? March? Yes. With my late wife. Vietnam, abortion, nuclear disarmament. Gestures. Look at the world 30 years on. <laughs> Be that as it may, if the judge decides that we have to proceed with our defence, I'll need to offer the jury some explanations. The diagrams of the plane, the map you drew up of R.F. Wilminster, this unfinished letter to Francois Baudin about Nicholas Coveney being... Um, what is it? Uh, a big help to you both? Let's go for a spectacular soon. Do you have any explanations? I wouldn't have thought Coveney was your type. Francois, yes. An intellect to match yours. Presumably. Star pupil. Head girl. Rodine, no? Tell them, ladies, please. So sorry. Then the Sorbonne. I'm overqualified for sex with a corporal, Miss Winslow. Is that what you're saying? It wasn't love then. Is that where you met Francois when you were studying in Paris? Well done. He was my professor. May I ask how old he is? 46. Yes, old enough to be my father. Who is your father? I've no idea. He died before I was born. I'm sorry. And your mother? I'm bored with this. What happened to your hand? I burnt it. Would you like me to make a complaint? It's name, rank and number, I'm afraid, as you can see. I am still trying other avenues, personal background. I don't understand. I mean, she's obviously an intelligent woman. Doesn't mean she can't be stupid. On the second count of this indictment, you, Charlotte Anne Sinclair, are charged with conspiracy to murder, contrary to Section 1 of the Criminal Law Act 1977. And the particulars of this offence are that you, with Nicholas Robert Coveney and Francois Baudin, conspired to murder Flying Officer Sammy Pollard, Flight Lieutenant Adam York, and persons unknown. On the second count of this indictment, do you plead guilty or not guilty? I denounce this so-called court of law as the instrument of an oppressive state. You murdered my boy, you evil bitch! It has forfeited its right to judge the people by failing to truly represent the people. State justice is no justice. Enter a plea of not guilty. I will take this opportunity to make one thing crystal clear. You are standing in a dock, not upon a soapbox. If you are in any doubt as to the difference between the two, I am sure your counsel will clarify the matter before I am obliged to. My lord. 
Neither will I tolerate any interruptions from the public gallery. May it please your Lordship, members of the jury. There must be few, if any of you, who cannot recall where you were, what you were doing. On June the 9th last year, when you heard news of the appalling disaster, which claimed so many lives in so few seconds in Hartbridge Wood. A disaster which we say was the result of a series of deliberate and calculated actions. There is no dispute as to the immediate cause of the crash. Both the Crown and the Defence accept the conclusions of the Royal Air Force Inspectorate of Flight Safety. There was a failure to reconnect certain controls which had been disconnected during routine maintenance. Corporal Coveney, the experienced and highly trained mechanic involved, who subsequently took his own life, made the sort of error that for you and I would be the equivalent of miswiring a household plug. In our case, it would mean that our vacuum cleaner didn't work when we switched it on. In the case of an aircraft, the result would be deadly. Having done this, you will hear that he contrived to subvert the two remaining procedures which would have detected his deadly error before the aircraft took off. Why? We say that he was persuaded, or bullied, or blackmailed. We may never know the precise nature of the evil bargain by the defendant, his lover, Charlotte Sinclair. Alors, je vous dis, mes confrères parlementaires de Strasbourg, que la chose la plus importante, c'est entrer. Most impressive from what I could hear. I was more of a classicist, of course. Ah, of course. This found its way onto my desk somehow, addressed to you. Thank you. May I ask? Confidentially, Peter. Naturally. I am starting to feel that I should place my advocacy at the service of my country. Uh, you tried once, didn't you? For the Tories, you didn't get adopted. Only just not. On a technicality. No wife. <laughs> this isn't a roundabout way of telling me you're getting married. No, no, no. That remains an ambition, of course. But one has others, and one can look beyond Westminster. Ah, the European Parliament. Strasbourg. Labour, though, Jeremy. How many times did Churchill change his party? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but he did have the common touch. I do pride myself on a pretty strong rapport with my clients. And they're often extremely common. All manner of men and women. People at the end of their tether, though. Does one ever know enough about their ordinary... Everyday concerns. Date for your diary, the 14th. My little celebration. Ah, you are encouraging turns, I trust. Well, yes. Good. Well, said fugit tempus irreparabile. Now I'm the rusty one. But time is flying, never to return. A final word of caution. This is not a political trial, and we don't have those in this country. But we do say that the defendant's motives were political. I've touched on her involvement with Action Radicale. Radical Action. A name which sounds almost quaint. Outlandish, certainly, to our English ears. But ideologies are no respecters of national frontiers, and even the most absurd have had the most dreadful atrocities performed in their name. He still gets nightmares. Do you? Not anymore. 
I can't remember the last time you watched your old man doing his stuff. It is a public gallery. Fine. As long as you're getting your university work done. If she's innocent, why the hell doesn't she say so? He's so angry, Cathy. I'm not used to it. He took this case for the right reasons. That doesn't make it any easier. Why won't she open up? She's enjoying being the centre of attention, if you ask me. Do you think she knows where Francois Baudin is? Oh, you bet she does, little madam. Not obliged to like our client. Nor her solicitor. Peas in a pod, James. Nice girls and their causes. The middle class in search of an authentic experience. Do you want my cheesecake? My eyes were bigger than my belly. I might be eating for two, but no thank you. Good and bad news. I've managed to locate the mother, Mrs. McHenry, now. She remarried three years ago and moved to Canada. I've got a number for her. And the bad? Our expert witness is no longer available to appear, should we need to call him. He sends his apologies. Nice of him. This late in the day, it's, it's not on, Miss Leeming. His wife has died. I'm working on a replacement. Well, ASAP, please. So we can serve the new report to the prosecution and to give me a chance to digest it in the middle of a case. Of course. The original report was refreshingly clear. At least they'll know what to ask their expert. Mr. Durden, you've explained how the control cables operating the ailerons were not fully reconnected after maintenance so that when the pilot tried to correct the wing drop in that turbulence, the plane rolled and went into a downward spiral. Yes. Is this failure to reconnect a common occurrence? No. But it is known to happen. <laughs> Rarely. But it is known to happen. Yes as a result of simple human error. Presumably. Not as part of an attempt at sabotage. Not to my knowledge. And mechanics have been known to sign off their own work. They want to finish their shift early, so they scribble a signature where their supervisor should have signed his after inspecting the work. <laughs> Again, rarely. Again. But it has happened. Yes. And not as a result of any attempt at sabotage. Until now. The jury will decide that, Mr. Durden. Before this accident. Not to my knowledge. Do you have complete confidence in the current procedures for checking that controls have been properly rigged? I have no reason to believe that they are anything less than adequate. It is true, isn't it, Corporal Knapp, that had you performed that final control movement check properly, you would have spotted Corporal Coveney's error. Yes. And the crash would not have happened. Those 22 lives would not have been lost. Please, Hans. Would you like a little time to compose yourself? I... Uh, I have no wish to upset you, but it is my duty to put this to you. That when you told my learned friend earlier that Nicholas Coveney deliberately distracted you from your task, that wasn't true. It was. I am sure you were distracted, but deliberately. Isn't it possible that, consciously or unconsciously, you exaggerated your account of Coveney's interruption? The more it fitted the prosecution's version, 
the less badly it would reflect on you. If it wasn't deliberate, how come I saw him driving his own car later in the day when he told me that it wouldn't start? He might have mended it. He was a mechanic. No further questions. Taxi! Mate. That's all right, don't mind me. You're welcome. Have a nice day. It's a strict cab rank principle, Mr. Order Martin. What? No, no, I'm taking the underground. Right? The tube top. The letter from my client to her alleged lover, Francois Baudin, is capable of more than one interpretation, as is her assumption of a false name. And Action Radical has no record of violence in this country. But even if the worst construction were put upon this and the other circumstantial evidence, there is an overriding consideration which is that the sequence of events leading to the crash is entirely consistent with human error. And especially in a case like this, which arouses strong emotions, the desire perhaps to see someone pay for a terrible disaster, I submit it is proper for your Lordship to intervene and withdraw the case from the jury. I have listened carefully to what you have said, Mr. Kavanagh. It was a good submission, James. And not good enough, unfortunately. Our new experts report. Thanks. Trevor Gregson. What's he like? Ex-MOD, with a bit of a chip on his shoulder, I'm told. I've never used him before. Well, I did tell you my first two alternatives were unavailable, or have been persuaded to be. Lenton? <laughs> I have been up against the Ministry before. And Charlotte's mother is here. Charlotte's refusing to see her. I urge you to explain yourself. The jury will listen. They're ordinary people. They just want to hear your side of the story. From you. Is it really so hard to grasp, Mr. Kavanagh, that some of us live our political beliefs? We don't slip in and out of them like changing our clothes. I will not compromise what I believe in. Is there a special gene for martyrdom? What? If there is, you've got it. Excuse me. Mrs. McHenry? Yes. I'm Cathy Winslow, junior counsel appearing for your daughter. Rosalind. How is she? <sighs> Difficult. Did she do this thing, do you think? What I think's not important, and um, she's not saying. Why won't Charlotte see you? Do you have children? Just this one. Oh. No. No. There comes a time to let your children take responsibility. To respect their anger. What's she so angry at? Apart from the world. Isn't that enough? Has she mentioned her father? Only that she never knew him and doesn't know who he was. That's not true. The 
flight's catching up with me, I'm afraid. She left home when she was 16. We'd barely spoken since. Very young, Mrs. McHenry. It was her decision. Family stuff. You see, the more I know about what makes her tick, the better my chances of helping her. Charlotte found out I'd been lying to her about her father. I always told her he'd been killed in a car crash, in fact. He took his own life when I was five months pregnant. And you didn't tell her that until she was 16? I didn't tell her at all. We always think our children don't know our hiding places, you know, Christmas presents, other secret things. I'd kept the cuttings. The cuttings? Just a report of the inquest. May I ask why he... He was severely depressed. He hanged himself. I can understand your daughter's shock at finding out. Fury that I'd kept the truth from her. Such a deep rift, though. She didn't even contact you when she was arrested. She did know that you'd gone to live in Canada after you married again. Again? Oh, her father and I were never married. Far too bourgeois for Rosalind Sinclair and Jerry White. What was he like? I really don't want to talk about him, Mr. Kavanagh. Do you know why Charlotte doesn't? Perhaps she thought it wouldn't help you. Helping us seems to be the last thing on her mind. Sometimes the truth can do more harm than good. Would it, in this case? Sorry. Why did you come? To show solidarity. Ah, Mr. Sprague's office just rang, confirming your lunch today. Ben, good. He's done well for himself, hasn't he, since leaving us? Junior minister of something or other. Tom, we should have a chat sometime. Should we? I should like to learn about your aspirations. As an ordinary person sort of chap. Perhaps over a jar at the rubber dub one evening. I look forward to that, sir. Discuss, Mr. Gregson, just keep it simple for the jury. Can't be too careful. What did Charlotte call herself when she was with Coveney the mechanic? Lisa something? Uh, White. I thought so. Is there a decent library in town? Ross, I'm sorry about landing you with that extra report. Oh, not at all. It happens. James, how do you find Trevor Gregson? You've had dealings. My junior has. And how are you coping with Semtex Sally? As my clerk calls her. I'm sure your clerk would acknowledge Ms. Leeming's commitment to justice, Ross. As would those clients who owe their liberty to her persistence. I'm sure they would, James. Especially the guilty ones. Even the most experienced mechanic might make such a mistake if, uh, for example, they were under particular stress. An experienced mechanic might be even more prone to. It's a routine procedure. And familiarity breeds, if not contempt, complacency? Far too often. Far too often. Mr. Gregson, you've read the report of the Royal Air Force Inspectorate on this accident? Yes. Does there anything you have read in this report lead you to conclude that the disaster was the result of a conspiracy? My Lord, is this witness's field of expertise aircraft safety or conspiracy? Mr. Kavanagh? Both, actually, since he asks. I beg your pardon, Mr. Gregson. A comment, just a comment. Leave it. Please confine yourself to answering questions. Mr. Gregson? Yes, if that's what you want. Mr. Kavanagh? Uh, I am obliged to your lordship. Mr. Gregson, 
Does anything you have read in that report lead you to conclude that this disaster was the result of anything other than a series of tragic mistakes? No, sir. No further questions. Mr. Harkins, do you wish to cross-examine? I'm much obliged to your lordship. When did you cease to be employed by the Ministry of Defence, Mr. Gregson? 1992. In what circumstances was your employment terminated? I left on the grounds of ill health. Would you care to be more specific? Would I care to be? Not really. Would it be true to say that the ill health you spoke of was psychiatric in nature? Why don't you ask my watcher, whoever it is? They'll have been programmed with my retro profile. They'll tell you. Um. <clears throat> And was that the only reason you left the MOD? The women in question were in on it. Cleaners. <laughs> Third level operatives, obviously. A bit of a chip on his shoulder. We are talking about the same thing, are we? Allegations of a sexual nature made against you by Mrs. My Lampton. Lord. It is clear that the witness is under uh, considerable strain. Mr. Harkins, unless you have any further questions for the witness. No, my lord. You may step down, Mr. Gregson. Just one thing. There are no more questions for you. Please leave the witness box. Get the MOD to show you 3 stroke RAF stroke TG stroke 912. Checking procedures in ground maintenance by yours truly. Restricted. Very possibly secret by now. <clears throat> My Lord, I would be grateful for an adjournment in order to take further instructions. You know what they say, just because you're paranoid. Doesn't mean three stroke RAF stroke TG stroke 912 restricted possibly secret doesn't exist. They're letting us have it. But, of course, they'll want to introduce it in camera. No public, no press. Whatever it is. She made it sound as if Jerry White's suicide was newsworthy. I'll take the Telegraph and the Mail. You take the Times and the Express. Five months pregnant when it happened. Allow some time for an inquest. Let's start at, say, um, December 1973. <laughs> joins these. But of course, it's a splendid excuse for dinner. Oh, Peter, my dear. I'm so sorry. Doris! Nary a tax to be had, even for ready money. No matter. I was just explaining the mysteries of Master Reader of the Honourable Society of the Middle Temple. Matthew Atta, Sir Henry Dorister, Rouge Griffin, Percivant of the College of Arms. Delighted. I am, of course, no stranger to arcane titles myself. Matthew is a prince, terribly minor. My ceremonial costume is a model of restraint compared to your Sir Henry. All that gorgeous velvet and gold. But it can prickle on a hot day. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Lunch well. How is the world of azure crests and rampant lions? Well, the flock allowance doesn't get any better. <laughs> I had to keep my breeches up with a discreet safety pin last time I was on show. 
very beady looks and portcullis and blue mantle. Ah. Well, now, Peter, any ideas about what you might want? Have you thought about your motto? Humblest apologies from Ben, ministerial duties. I'm from Millbank Tower, Melanie Morrison. Not too disappointed, I hope. No, goodness. Have I got a meal? A Campari and soda, please. Um, pour moi seulement de l'eau. Gaza, s'il vous plaît. I'm sorry, sir, I'm Italian. Oh, we should all have an extra language or two up our sleeves these days, particularly in the service industries. Mm. The fizzy water. <laughs> Grazie. So. so, Ben was a little vague on the nuts and bolts, but I gather you're keen to come on board in a big way. The last few months, um, Melanie, have been a time of soul-searching for Jeremy Aldermartin QC. But now I feel more than ready to commit myself to making a pretty major contribution. You know, I, I realize, of course, that I'm a relative newcomer to the party. Well, that's no problem. You don't even have to be a member. Um, surely... Donations, bequests, covenants. Was it more than 50,000 you had in mind? Fancy a bite to eat. I can come out this afternoon, if you like, while you're dealing with the in-camera application. It won't take long. I'll get very short shrift if I oppose it. It's that sort of case. Every Euro constituency has a long, long list of potential candidates already, Jeremy. But I have swayed jurors, Melanie. Swayed them by argument, by passion. Is such advocacy to be denied a role, speaking for one's country in the very heart of Europe? You have left it a little late in life. I'm too old. Now, there, must, there must be some fast-track procedure. Spero che abbia piaciuto il pranzo. Vi posto il conto? Um, il conto, signore? No, we're fine. Just the bill. Grazie. You're quite sure I won't be recalled? Both the judge and counsel for the prosecution agree with me that we should spare you that ordeal. They won't let it out, you know. The truth. The jury will hear your report at least, and a not guilty verdict would raise a lot of questions. They're cleverer than that. In view of the nature of the evidence you are about to hear, I have decided it should be heard in camera, which means that the press and public have been asked to wait outside. You are, of course, under a general duty not to discuss this case with anyone outside your number. It is especially important that you bear this duty in mind with regard to what you are now going to hear. Mr. Durden, do you recall an answer you gave when I was cross-examining you last Tuesday? I asked you about procedures for checking the proper rigging of controls. And you said, I have no reason to believe that they are anything less than adequate. Yes? Yes. You see, the jury has just been listening to parts of this report. This sensitive report. This secret report. Classified as such, I am sure, for the best of reasons by those who know best. Which paints a very different picture. Might have been considered adequate by Biggles for his Sopwith camel. An accident waiting to happen. Deeply concerned that budgetary constraints are putting lives at risk. Several confirmed accounts of failures to reconnect controls. Though none, thankfully, resulting in an accident. It would appear that they are not so rare after all. 
And do you still say you had no reason to doubt the adequacy of these procedures? I do not doubt them. You did then. When you first read the report, this note of a discussion in November, F.D. Francis Durden expressed the view that notwithstanding the alarmist tenor of Gregson's conclusions, there are real causes for concern which must be addressed. You asked me whether I have any doubts. Had you asked me what I thought then, I might have given a different answer. But I had no knowledge of the report then. Neither did my learned friend. Then you can hardly expect my answers to have reflected my comments on a report that did not exist as far as this court was concerned. Put simply, Mr. Durden, do you not agree that your evidence last week fell well short of giving the whole picture? Constrained as I was by the sensitivity of... Look, I suppose it could be construed, if you want to put it that way, that, to borrow a phrase, I was a little economical with the old actuality. No further questions. A bomb through a restaurant window because there were class enemies inside. Committed to the overthrow of the state, but she was not a central figure in this conspiracy. Inclined to leniency. Suspended sentence for this intelligent, though foolish, young woman. Like mother, like daughter. But nothing about Jerry White? No. Mrs. McHenry, Look, Rosalind, I'd like to ask you about your daughter's father, Gerhard Weiss. I was afraid of this. Jerry White, Gerhard Weiss. We thought we could change the world. He was very handsome. But of course, one couldn't fall for a plain revolutionary. It was Che Guevara on our walls, not Chairman Mao. And he was in Bader Meinhof? On the fringes. Like me with the angry brigade, we were very small fry. Did you meet in London? Yes, he was passing through using our squad. A radical home from home. We talked revolution, we fell in love. He stayed for a wonderful summer. Then he went back to Berlin, was arrested. And took his own life before he could be tried. At least he had a choice of sorts. His comrades weren't so lucky. Very trigger-happy, the Pulitzer. How did Charlotte react when she found out the truth? She hasn't yet. She still thinks that I betrayed his memory. That he was a hero. And he wasn't. Just a man I loved. My first instinct was to tear the rag into small sheets to hang on a nail in my gardener's outside privy. However, the story only appeared in the earliest London edition. A gibbering editor is even now facing his proprietor. I think it unlikely that the jury will have seen it. If I prove correct, and as we are nearing our close, I would be minded to let the trial continue. Unless, of course, you wish to make an application to the contrary. I have yet to discuss this with my client, my lord. I'm sure you will impress upon her that if the trial does continue and she is found guilty, that there can be no appeal against the verdict on the grounds of this prejudicial publicity. Personally, I'm inclined to agree with his lordship. Let the trial continue. If for no other reason than to save my client from having to go through a retrial. If there were one. It might not be thought in the public interest. It's a distinct possibility. Is it, Ross? I imagine. Excuse me. What did Gregson say about the truth not coming out? The state murdered him. The suicide was organized, faked. 
He was a martyr. You do believe me? You of all people. Charlotte, I've no doubt that the state, any state, is capable of that sort of thing, and worse. But if I've learned anything working inside a system with which I had fundamental differences, it's that my strongest weapon is the truth. That's what gets the old sods on the run. And I'm afraid the truth about your father is not what you think. It's time you saw your mother. Really? It's a bit of a turn up for James. Mummy ex Orc Brigade and Daddy ex Bader Meinhof. Angry Brigade, gentlemen. Oh, well, Dame Radicalism never really classed me to help us. A narrow escape for you both. How was your famous lunch, by the way? Famous? The scallops were overseared and the granita it had on the crunchy side. Ah. Well, you could always stand as an independent, I suppose. can get the trial stopped, it does seem likely that um, you won't have to go through another one. It's your decision. Do what you like, Mr. Kavanagh. You should have been proud of my father. Why are you so ashamed of him? I'm not. I just didn't want you to be. Perhaps you'd like a few moments. It's not easy for either of them. That's a lie! It's not. My darling Rosalind, please try and understand. I have today heard that Stefan and Rolf and Anna were killed when the Polizei raided the safe house. I was promised, stupid to believe, that the bastards would not shoot. Yes, I told them where to find my comrades. I was turned, I think, in English. If I informed, then I would not get too long a sentence, and one day I can again be with you and with the child you carry so beautifully. A normal life after all the craziness. But now I cannot forgive myself. What I have done, it must be for you to tell or not all this to my son or my daughter. Only you will know one day if they are a person to be too much hurt by the truth. And now I finish. My love to you and to the child. Is that an unfinished letter written by you to Francois Baudin of Action Radicale? Yes. What was the nature of your relationship with him? He was my lover and my teacher. He brought me to life. He let me share in his commitment. Do you still love him? Yes. Do you know where he is now? I would never betray a comrade. Now, N.C., that's Nicholas Coveney, Corporal Coveney. Yes. NC is being brilliant. A big help with what we need. Let's go for a spectacular soon. Can you explain what you meant? Action Radica were going to get into the base at night and spray paint an aircraft was one idea, 
or smash up a generator or some communications equipment. And why was Kovny helping you? He didn't know he was. I cultivated him for intelligence purposes. Cultivated? I had a sexual relationship with him using a false name. And how did that help you? I could visit the base as his guest. Find out enough to draw a decent map. Get any details I could of the security. And you were able to take from his briefcase technical diagrams of the plane? Yes. Why? To help you sabotage it? No. No, I, I never. All those people. Nick was in such a state when he found the letter and called me. He couldn't have been thinking straight. 22 lives. And his. So why the diagrams? Because they were there. That's all. And how would this planned spectacular have furthered the aims of Action Radicale? It would have shown that the military machine cannot escape the anger of the people. That the oppressed will find a voice. Can you explain more fully? I anticipate you, Mr. Huggins. Mr. Kavanagh, the word soapbox springs to mind. With great respect, my lord. It was my learned friend who introduced the defendant's political beliefs, or a version of them, at the start of this trial. I submit that the jury is entitled to hear about them from the defendant herself. Very well. Briefly. I am much obliged, Your Lordship. What do you believe? In your own words. That it's immoral to spend billions on warplanes when millions live on the breadline. That our society is organized for the benefit of the few. That the people that do the hardest work create huge wealth in which they have no share. That there has to be a better way to run things. Thank you. No further questions. Members of the jury, my learned friend promised to show you that the defendant was part of a terrible conspiracy. He hasn't done that, has he? It became clear that the crash was due to a series of tragic errors the blame for which, incidentally, you may feel should not be shouldered by individuals alone. He also referred to the very notion of radical action as quaint and outlandish. To some, maybe. Is Charlotte Sinclair naive and misguided? Possibly. Idealistic? Certainly. But idealism is not a crime. And as you consider your verdict, I would ask you, however naive or misguided you consider my client, to reflect upon her idealism. The appalling loss of life in Hartbridge Wood was a tragedy. Not just for the victims, but for their families, their friends. And you saw Charlotte Sinclair weep for them all. A ruthless and calculating terrorist? Or just a young woman who wants to change the world? 
Charlotte Sinclair. The jury has found you not guilty of conspiracy to murder, and on that count, you are discharged. You have, however, in a belated recognition of the inevitable, confessed to theft, and been found guilty of that charge. You insinuated yourself into the affections of the late Corporal Coveney, a loyal servant of the Crown. For your political ends, with dreadful consequences. This is no ordinary case of theft, and I cannot pass an ordinary sentence. You will go to prison for four years. Poster of Che Guevara on a wall when we first met. And don't say who. I'm feeling my age. But you didn't throw bombs at the rich and privileged. Just as well, that's all stopped, I suppose. For your sake. Quite beautiful, Peter. And the Latin? Time is flying, never to return. Never mind, Jeremy. An act of class treachery for you, anyway, I'd have thought. The Labour Party. No, 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 no. I'm sure it have fitted in very comfortably these days. That's what's worrying you. However, Bruno and Greta Clea. Que sera, sera. Yes. Yes, yes, completely empty, Peter. Figs. Oh. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a silk. Oh. <laughs> now. Your watch, if you please, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. I can clearly see it's second hand. That's second hand. Oh. <laughs> I wrap it in my handkerchief. So, thus, it is safe and secure. Still going? Just. But we'll soon put a stop to that. <laughs> Alakazam, Alakazoz, here is your watch just as it was. Oh, I knew it'd go wrong this evening. This has never happened before, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, it has. <laughs> James, advice. Plead guilty to malicious damage, but stress provocation. Alternatively, get rid of the evidence. <laughs> In that case, I could just go. Alakazam, Alakazoo, your watch is gone. Boo hoo hoo hoo. Alakazam, Alakazak, your watch is restored. Cluck, 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 cluck. Oh. <laughs> If I ever become a rich man, or if ever I grow to be old, I will build a house with deep thatch to shelter me from the cold. And there shall the Sussex songs be sung and the story of Sussex told. I will hold my house in the high wood within a walk of the sea. And the men that were boys when I was a boy shall sit and drink with me. <laughs> <laughs>